Enter into just about any Orthodox church or home, and you can tell Orthodox Christians love their icons. From mosaics to frescoes to jewelry and children's books, one of the most visible markers of Orthodox identity is the veneration of icons and their prominence in Orthodox Christian lives. But what about the icons within? Genesis 1, 26 through 28 tells us that we are made in the image and likeness of God, a claim that patristic to modern Orthodox theologians have emphasized to teach us understandings about everything from the incarnation to theosis. Athanasius very famously talks about how we are made in this divine image and in the fall that image is corrupted in our sinfulness and it's only God as almost an iconographer who can come and repaint that image within us. Modern theologians like to talk about somehow that the divine image is always retained within us, but the likeness can be lost in sinfulness and needs to be regained through a process of deification. So how do we acknowledge though and venerate this icon that we find in ourselves and those around us? How do we honor and seek out the divine image in everyone that we encounter? And why should we? St. Maria of Paris explains, during a so service, the priest does not only sense the icons of the Savior, the Mother of God and the saints, he also senses the icon people, the image of God in the people who are present. I'm sure we've all experienced this when we go to an Orthodox service. As they leave the church, the people remain as much the image of God, worthy of being sensed and venerated. She then goes on to discuss the importance of the mystery of communion, with your fellow human. So communion here is not just the sacrament that we partake of. Uh, it's not just some sort of mystical encounter we might think of with God in our own prayer corner, but it's also in our interpersonal relations and encounters with other. That is where we meet God, in those that we love and maybe those that we should love, right? That maybe we struggle with. This point of encounter is just that very much, just as important as the communion that we partake of in the sacraments. Saints' lives are full of imagery and examples of finding holiness in the presence of God in unexpected places. From Zosimus meeting Mary of Egypt in the desert to learn of her superior holiness and not even knowing, is she a creature? Is she a man? Is she a holy ascetic? Who is this, this shadowy figure that he sees and discovers as a naked woman? To the singing we do at Pascha about Christ's descent into Hades, that hell thought it had a body and discovered it had God, right? This element of condescension. Perhaps then we should be unsurprised that we should also seek God even in these most unexpected places and human faces. So let's talk about finding the image of God in others. Honoring the divine image or icon within means allowing that image to be revealed as unique in others and also in oneself and not trying to make a predetermined, limited image, but rather inviting the disclosure and the revelation of this unique and particular icon that God has already created in the other people we encounter. If we don't, and instead impose expectations and social constraints, we choose to worship a creaturely icon rather than that already made by the creator. That is, we need to seek and venerate already what God has revealed in the human for us, instead of what we want to see or control or desire to conform and expect. This involves humility, to invite and encounter mystery in meeting our neighbor. If God is ultimately mysterious and unknowable, then so is his image in everyone around us. It's very easy to think that we already know somebody Right? Oh, I've met them a couple times, I've interacted with them, I know who they are. And then we don't give them that, that opportunity for growth in the divine likeness. So we need to offer love of God to those we encounter, pray they see God in us, and that they become and we become more iconic through this interpersonal communion. There's also a diversity of the icons that we encounter, and we should appreciate this. If we look around the church or our icon corners at home, we see that there are many different types of saints. If we think about who our favorite saints are, we might realize we relate to some more than others based on their particular unique qualities. 
right? How that image they have, that God has given them has been revealed. But yet if we look at the stylized faces of the icons, they all seem pretty much similar to Christ. And that's very intentional in iconography, that we see the image of Christ, but we also see their clothes, their hand gestures, perhaps what um, position they're in, that tell us about their actual life, their unique personhood. So these types of examples we should also look for in the people around us. We're not all, when we become more godlike, we all don't just conform and lose our particularity. We retain that uniqueness in the way that God is unique and has gifted that to all of us. I think sometimes about something I read in the life of Abbas Gavrilia, uh, a blessed woman of the 20th century, that meeting another is never coincidence. It's either willed by God or allowed by God as an opportunity to meet God, right? To learn from those people, to pray for them, and to honor them as icons, even if it's sometimes hard to see. We can think of our own interpersonal lives right? How, and our relationships, maybe with those in our families. How sad we'd be if we saw someone defacing an icon, right? If we came into a church and we saw someone splashing paint over it, right? Or if we saw someone tearing it off the walls, these acts of iconoclasm. But yet how joyous are we when we see someone venerating, making their cross, venerating an icon, cleaning it, or writing a new icon, right? Churches celebrate uh, whole programs of iconography. Even so more with our neighbors. If we some, see someone doing something damaging to themselves or somebody else hurting another person, this is the same. This is a type of iconoclasm. But when we see them living a good life, not that we should be judging everyone, but when we see them doing good deeds or we are helping them with something, these are all ways that help build up that iconography within us. So this brings me to that second point, which is about the icons within ourselves. We should all be iconoduals as Orthodox. That's lovers of icons. We not only need to venerate and love the icons we find on the church walls and in those we encounter, but also the icon within ourselves. And perhaps this is the most challenging for some of us. This is not a license for self-gratification, but rather pious attention to cultivating ourselves with increasing divine likeness. Paradoxically, this means greater humility. Right? So it's not divine likeness in a way I can say, oh, look how holy I am, but in a way where I can give more of myself to others and recognize my own sinfulness in becoming ever more like God. To be a lover and protector of the divine image in ourself means not just keeping ourselves free from corruption, just not doing bad things, but actively cultivating and increasing divine likeness by voluntarily self-emptying activities on behalf of others so they might also know God's love. We also have an obligation to protect the divine image, just as we would do it in the least of those among us, in everyone that we encounter, we need to protect that image within ourselves. We shouldn't let others denigrate or destroy that image within us. Right? There can be humbling experiences that we learn and grow from, and these can be good things. But there can also be instances where we might be very vulnerable to things such as abuse or things that are just too much for us. We don't yet have the, the patience to endure. And I think it's fine for us to withdraw in those instances as an act of iconodual faith, right? as protecting that divine image within us that God has given and that God already loves. Venerating God's icon within yourself and perhaps other, others is less perhaps about iconography and particular styles and the number of times you cross yourself or when you kiss it. It's more about venerating God in the world and celebrating the divine incarnation that God took on all material creation in taking on human form, uniting the divinity to the humanity. This is what we celebrate in the iconography. This is what's celebrated by the Seventh Ecumenical Council and the restoration of icons that we sing about on the Sunday of Orthodoxy. And it's what we celebrate when we venerate that icon in each other and ourselves. So God became human. God united himself to our humanity fully and created us in his divine image and likeness. Part of that means we are created to love and to know that foremost, through the power of humble love of others. So in your work, in your homes, your families, your communities, and your own selves, strive to find God there. I remember growing up and my mother would always ask me when I got home from school as like a middle schooler, how did you see God today? 
I was sometimes annoyed by this question, thinking, I don't know, it wasn't a miraculous day, it was just a regular day in middle school. But then, you know, as I, I thought about it, she was asking me to say, where did you see kindness? Where did you give kindness? Did, you, did someone do something nice for you today? How did you see God at work in the world? So I encourage you to use that in your own, that very simple reflection in your own lives. How did I see God today? He was there. He was with you all day long. How did you see him? How did you encounter him? When we see God in love and we find him, our love increases. There's never a, an end point, right? And in that love, we become more aware of our own sinfulness. That leads us to repentance and increasing love, this ongoing communion and encounter. So the respect and offer we honor the icons in the church must translate to the respect and honor we offer each other. As I close, I'd like to leave you with a prayer I heard a young mother offer her children as she sent them off to school. I know some of my examples, I have little children, so that's why some of my examples uh, focus on these kind of maternal things. But she sent her children off to school saying, I pray that today you are an icon of God's love in the world that you let other people see God's love working in you and that you find and honor that love in others. So I hope that as we as Christians, we can strive to do the same. Let's take our veneration of icons beyond our prayer corners and our church interiors into the world and lives where God is present and already condescending to meet us there with his love. Thank you.